Uh, thank you for coming to the HPC and AI Innovation Lab. Um, so I'm sure that you've heard um, a lot of excitement in the industry about what we can do with AI and machine learning and deep learning. And our, our team in our lab has been building solutions for this space. So very similar to what we do with our other solutions, including high performance computing, where we take servers, storage, networking, software, and put it all together uh, to uh, build and design targeted solutions for a particular use case, and then bring in services and support along with that so that we have a complete product. That's what we're doing for the AI space as well. So whether we're doing it uh, with uh, machine learning algorithms and whether your data is, uh, you know, say for example in Hadoop or whether you're doing deep learning, you know, convolutional neural networks, RNN, um, and no matter what technology you're using, right? So you have different choices for compute, that those compute choices can be CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, custom ASICs, there's all sorts of different choices for compute. Similarly, you have a lot of different choices for networking, for storage, and your actual use case, right? Are you doing image recognition, fraud detection? What are you trying to do? So our goal is multiple fold. First, we want to bring in all these new technologies, all these different technologies, see how they work well together. Specifically in the AI space, we want to make sure that we have the right software framework because a big piece uh, of putting these solutions together is making sure that you know your MXNet and CAFE and TensorFlow and all these frameworks are working well together along with all these different neural network models. So putting all these things together, uh, making sure that we can run standard benchmark data sets so we can do comparisons across configurations uh, and, and then as a result of all that work, share best practices and tuning, uh, including the storage piece as well. Our top, five, our top 500 cluster is over here. So multiple racks, this is a uh, uh, cluster that is uh, more than 500 servers today, so around 560 servers. And on the latest top 500 list, which is a list that's published twice a year of the 500 fastest supercomputers in the world, and we started with a smaller number of CPUs. We had 128 servers. And then we added more uh, servers, we swapped over to the next generation of CPUs, then we added even more servers, and now we have the latest generation Intel CPUs in this cluster. One of the questions we've been getting more and more is, what do you see with liquid cooling? So Dell has had the capability to do liquid cool systems for a while now. But we recently added this capability into factory as well. So you can order systems that are a direct contact liquid cool directly from factory. Let's compare the two, right? Right over here, you have an air-cooled rack. Here we have the exact same configuration, so the same compute infrastructure, but with liquid cool. Uh, the CPU has a cold plate on it, and that's cold with, cooled with facilities water. So these pipes actually have water flowing through them, and so each sled has two pipes coming out of it for the water loop and these pipes from each server, each sled, go into these rack manifolds and at the bottom of the rack over there is where we have our heat exchanger. In our early studies, we have seen that um, your efficiency in terms of how much performance you get out of the server should not matter whether you're air-cooled or liquid-cooled if your air cooling solution can provide enough cooling for your components. So what that means is, if you have a well air cooled solution, it's not going to perform any worse than a liquid cooled solution. What the liquid cooling allows you to do is in the same rack space, put in, put in a higher level configuration, higher TDP processors, more disks, a configuration that you say cannot adequately liquid uh, air cool, that configuration in the same space in your data center in, with the same airflow, you will be able to liquid cool. And the biggest advantage of liquid cooling today is to do with PUE ratios. So how much of your you know, uh, infrastructure power are you using for compute and uh, your infrastructure versus for uh, uh, cooling and uh, uh, energy yeah, and power. This is production. This is part of the cluster. What we're doing right now is we're running rack level studies, right? So we've done single chassis studies, 
in our thermal lab along with our thermal engineers on the uh, advantages of liquid cooling and what we can do and how it works for our particular workloads. But now we have a rack level solution and so we are running different types of workloads, manufacturing workloads, weather simulation, some AI workloads, standard high performance slim pack benchmarks on an entire rack of liquid cooled, an entire rack of air cooled. All these racks have metered PDUs where we can measure power. So we're going to measure power consumption as well. And then we have sensors which will allow us to measure temperature and then we can tell you the whole story. And of course, uh, we, have, we have a really um, you know, a phenomenal group of people in our thermal team, our, th our uh, architects, and we also have the ability to come in and evaluate a data center to see, you know, does liquid cooling make sense for you today? So it's not a, you know, one size fits all and liquid cooling is what everybody must do and you must do it today. No, uh, it's a, and that's the value of this lab, right? Actual quantitative results for liquid cooling, for all our technologies, for all our solutions, so that we can give you the right configuration, right optimizations with the data backing it up for the right decision for you instead of forcing you into the one solution that we do have.